Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for July 15th, 2021. Wow, it's hard to believe we're in the middle of the month already. It seems like it was just the 4th of July um, a day or two ago. Um, yesterday, we had a little bit of mixed results with the NASDAQ eking out a little tiny gain and those bears kind of milling them out just a little bit, putting a little bit of caution um, on these charts. So how about we settle into our office chairs and let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Well, how about we take a look at these charts, see if we can gain some information about how we might want to approach the market for today, try to eliminate the bias and just look at the price action of these charts. So first off, let's take a look at the Dow. If we were to take a take a peek here, notice that we crossed up through some resistance in the chart. We're looking pretty good here overall um, in this chart. But then we put in just a little bit of a concerning pattern here at that resistance. And this morning we're looking for a little bit of a pushback. Right now Dow futures are looking lower uh, by uh, at this second down 175 points. They've been down as much as 195 so far this morning. So we're looking to push back and we may be giving up this little bit of price support, at least at the open. Now there's a lot of data coming our way still, but no particular, no particular um, worries just yet because anything could happen around all of this data. Let's take a look. We also have this upside trend kind of holding in place in that chart. And if we were to fall, if we were to get busy and, and drop, um, notice that we could get um, a little bit of price support right here in that trend. And then of course we have some price support right through this area right in here. Notice we have some price action support that could hold us up potentially in that chart. Now if we were to fall through this area right here, that's where things could get a little bit dicey, a little bit serious. Uh, notice that we could drop um, um, quite a bit um, into um, levels down into here. And these would be some, some really substantial point drops for the Dow. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, if we can find that bullishness, if we happen to find in all of this data this morning, reason to get all kinds of bullish, then we could bounce off of this this morning and start pushing back up, testing these resistance highs. And uh, there's no reason to believe with the current market the way it is, it's just buy everything. It doesn't matter the price. There's no reason to believe we can't continue to move this market higher. So watch that close. Let's take a look at um, our SPY. The SPY, whoops, got to learn how to type. The SPY holding up very, very well. And notice we have a nice strong upside uh, move here in this chart. Our trend continues to remain very, very strong. Uh, to the upside. We are tightening up, I guess, in this channel to the upside and notice that we have been reaching up here toward that upside of this channel and starting to show just a little bit of softness with some spinning top type candle patterns here in the chart and now trying to push down a little bit this morning. But let's keep in mind that that push down this morning um, still could reverse um, as we get through uh, data today. So watch that close. Um, in the short term, we have this little upside trend that could hold us as support if we pull back. And let's keep in mind there is a teeny little tiny support level right there that could also add in just a little bit of help. However, if this were to fail through here, let's just notice that there is a pretty deep hole under this area. A little tiny support right there, but a pretty deep hole underneath here because we haven't pulled back much. We've just been in a straight up move to the upside with very little 
pullback in the market. That makes for a dangerous situation where we could really fall if those bears get some inspiration. However, we should also notice the fact that if we can hold this price support, if, if we can find that bullish reason to hang on in here, then there's no reason to believe that we can't push on through. Wouldn't be tough, and tough to see new record highs being set in the SPY. Let's take a look at the Q. Now the QQQ has been in a unbelievable upside move. You know, it's very, very rare. Um, I would say in my career, 30 years, to see such a relentless move to the upside. Um, we, we saw that in 2017. We saw that in 29, or, uh, 1999. But there's very little time in the market where we see such a relentless push to the upside and no dip to speak of to test support. And what that means is that leaves a rather dangerous situation in the in these charts. If we were to start to fall, it could fall really, really hard. So you wanna be a little bit careful. As I've been saying, and I'm gonna to continue to repeat this, stay with the trend, but be careful not to overtrade and be careful not to become complacent thinking that the market will never fall because trust me, there will be a day it will fall and then it won't come back for a while. So watch that closely. Now that's not today. We're certainly holding up bullish in here, but there is just a little tiny bit of concern. NASDAQ is trying to hold on. It's really trying hard to hold on to some positiveness here this morning while the other futures are looking lower. But let's keep a close eye on this. One thing we have to realize is that this trend is a very, very tight channel. Okay, we just continue to tighten this channel up and up and up as we continue to, to um, climb this, uh, this mountain here. So let's keep in mind it really wouldn't take too much of a shock to break this trend. Um, we can break it pretty easily and now it might be a painful break um, because the point move could be large but just notice it wouldn't take a whole lot to really break that upside trend and the problem with that is guys there really is not much in the way of support underneath here you can see we've had these little tiny pullback areas where there could be a little bit of price support but overall we could move all the way back to here for um, a substantial support in the chart. Now keep in mind, I can't just look at the bearish side, I have to look at the bullish side and just realize that there is nothing wrong in this pattern up here. We're just dancing around going sideways. Little spinning top dojis means indecisiveness in the chart. And if we can find reason for bullishness, there's no reason at all in here that we can't see that opportunity that we could continue to move on higher, um, moving back up toward the upside of that channel. So keep a close eye on that. It kind of depends on how we react to all of this data. Now, um, if we take a look at IWM, we have a very different circumstance here in IWM. IWM failed at a lower high. We have been struggling. There's a high, a lower high, a lower high, a lower high. And we have been struggling in here trying to move through that level. Well, we've kind of made a decision here, I think at this point, failing at this lower high, starting to set this downtrend in play. And notice that that failure has occurred at the 50 day moving average and our 50 day moving average is now turning lower. So that is a big problem here and a technical break here in the IWM. Now IWM also this morning is looking to gap down. That gap down could potentially set that new, well, if it gaps down here this morning, and that could change, um, believe me, that could change before that we open today, um, that would set a lower low and really cement um, this downtrend um, in IWM. So we have one index not looking so hot, the others kind of showing a little bit of tiredness, like they need a little bit of rest up here at the top. So um, I would just suggest a little bit of caution this morning, be really, really careful. Um, about how you approach this market for today. If you've got some profits, it might be a good idea to be thinking about grabbing some of those gains and uh, possibly even um, hedging um, some of those positions um, 
should we start seeing a little bit of bearishness stir up in here let's take a look at our vix now our vix yesterday um, interestingly enough saw um, fear falling so as we were kind of uh, drifting around here with the uh, iwm moving lower and just not really gaining much ground we saw the VIX just kind of take a little bit of a resting pattern. Now, if I put some support and resistance lines on there, notice that we are holding this price support in here. We can't seem, as we're trying to make these new highs, can't seem to make a new low here in the VIX. So keep a close eye on that. I don't think there's anything major here to be particularly worried about um, we still have this downtrend in play what we will want to be watching for however is if we break above that downtrend um, in any way shape or form if we break above that and then hold it as support that's where we could really have some trouble come into the market but if we can find that bullishness here in the market we could certainly just break on through uh, down below here and have that vix um, uh, pushing on lower now one thing I will say is we're starting to reach down in those levels um, here in the VIX where we're showing just a little bit of complacency so um, just make sure you're keeping you're staying on your toes really staying focused to that price action the trend is still there the bullish trend is still there don't give up on the trend just yet but start start having that little bit of caution flag waving out there um, in front of you so that you can stay on your toes and be prepared just in case um, we start to move lower let's take a look at our t2122 really interesting yesterday that t2122 barely moved to the upside we were trying to get the give the impression in the indexes in the market that everything was copacetic everything was good and yet t2122 said um, more stocks were just kind of drifting along sideways than we're going up now what we've been seeing here recently is is the big tech about 7 to 11 big tech companies are doing the majority of the work here right now and so you can imagine you know, what could happen if big tech starts to sell um, so keep a close eye on that there was just not a major response here in t2122 yesterday although we were really they were really trying to give us the impression that things were improving and one of the things i did see yesterday that was kind of interesting a pretty substantial increase in um, um, consumer defensive stocks um, some utility stocks um, perking up yesterday and seeing seeing some um, gains in support um, on those stocks while we were kind of drifting around here sideways in the indexes so watch that carefully then let's take a look at our t2101 now t2101 01 started down earlier in the day but turned back up so we did get a little tiny lift here in t2101 but i gotta tell you honestly that doesn't really give me a whole lot of confidence here yet um, our market breadth is really really low and um, a major divergence from our indexes being created here on market breadth so watch that closely um, don't exactly know what that means but what we don't want to see is we don't want to see market breadth really starting to climb on a selling wave so keep a close eye on that let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today and we have a busy day on our economic calendar let's take a quick peek here we're going to be getting jobless claims here this morning and we know jobless claims has been um, a little bit problematic we continue to have um, consensus suggests they're going to go lower and and then just quite a few times we kind of miss on on that and claims go a little bit higher so watch that closely they are um, suggesting another decrease in claims um, let's watch that closely this morning that could be a market mover um, in uh, both bullish and bearish so watch that closely we've got Philly Fed coming out obviously that has the potential for moving the market then we've got income um, Empire State we've got import export prices and then industrial production here at 915 keep in mind we have more of Jerome Powell out there trying to calm the waters telling everyone there is no inflation uh, to speak of it it's gonna it's just transitory it's not gonna stick around 
around um, in the market. I do think it's interesting that another, another government agency, the Social Security Office, is announcing probably the highest um, um, increase, cost of living increase required for um, retired or retired citizens because of inflation. Um, it will be the highest increase in decades. So um, kind of an interesting thing. Uh, makes you wonder um, where the credibility really lies. Um, who's got credibility here? Um, no inflation. Yes, there's inflation. No, um, kind of an interesting thing. Um, also, let's take a look. We do have a natural gas report. We've got a Fed speaker today. And then at the end of the day down here, you can see we got the Fed balance sheet, but um, no one seems to care about how much debt that we have. So I don't know that that's going to be any kind of a major worry. Let's take a look at... Um, our earnings calendar today. Now our earnings calendar, we have a, a rather busy one um, with um, about 35 companies or so listed on the calendar. And we have uh, some um, stocks that could move us around. Now keep in mind guys, it's gonna become a time where I can't keep up with all of the, the notables that will be coming out. So if you guys look in just below the title of the video, there is a link that will take you back to the morning blog. In the morning blog, I list notable um, earnings reports. So I'll cover a few this morning. Just keep in mind if you want to get that full list, just click that link, go back to the morning blog, and you can get that full list. Uh, first off, we're going to hear from Alcoa uh, today. Alcoa um, has been moving in this little downtrend. We've been really struggling here recently in all of the metals, uh, not just precious metals, but aluminum, copper, everything moving a little bit lower. So this could be an interesting report today. Keep a close eye on that. We're going to hear from New York Bank. New York Bank also moving in a little bit of a downtrend. Could be an important um, report today. Watch that closely. Underneath its 50-day, and that 50-day is starting to flatten and roll over. So kind of keep that in mind. We're going to be hearing from CentOS. CentOS reporting this morning. Looks like it had a gap down and is trying to move back up um, on that earnings report. CentOS has been very, very strong here heading into the earnings report. Looks like we found a little price support here in the pre-market and trying to bounce off of that level. Uh, big banks, we're gonna hear from Morgan Stanley here today. We're gonna hear from um, uh, People's United this morning. We're going to hear from Progressive Insurance this morning. We're going to hear from USB. US Bancorp will be reporting this morning. Also, United Healthcare will be reporting. So keep a close eye on these. Uh, these are certainly potential market movers um, and anything is possible around these reports. Um, let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up, guys, for today. But before we do that, if you could do me a quick favor. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon um, so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find these videos to be useful, to be helpful, and you're planning for the day, um, if you could please click those thumbs up buttons, leave those comments. It's the engagement that makes a difference with um, YouTube and showing these folk, the videos to more folks. And also, if you could please click that share button and share this video out on your social media feed. It helps the channel to continue to grow. Hey, I also want to say for those of you folks that aren't members of Right Way Options or things like, uh, you know, any of the, the services that, that uh, we provide, if you want to support this kind of content, please make sure you click that link just below the title of the video um, for buy a coffee. Um, that continues to support the channel and this content and you guys will start to see some improvements in um, channel content here um, as we go along and I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the channel that way um, honestly uh, means the world to me let's take a look at a few stocks now um, I, I'm kind of shifting just a little bit here there's a little bit of worry going on in the market um, and a few things that I want to point out here. One of those, let's take a look at the financials, XLF. Now, XLF 
pulling back. Notice we failed at this high here. And overall, we have a bit of a downtrend going on in that chart. So um, that failure comes at the 50 day moving average. And as we get through, as we continue to progress through these bank earnings, we're not really getting um, a follow through to the upside on much of these banks. So watch that closely. Notice that, that 50 day moving average is just now starting to flatten and maybe starting to turn to the downside. So watch that closely. If you're looking for something to short, you might want to take a look at some of those uh, financial sector stocks. They are starting to look just a little bit on the weak side. Now, um, I want to be some of these stocks like Apple. Let's take a look at this. Apple, I have to say, guys, at this point, it's certainly very, very bullish. But this thing has gone almost parabolic and it's trying to move up again this morning. Um, watch that carefully. I know, I know Apple's a great company and all of that, but there's a lot of risk in chasing a stock that has moved up that strongly and sharply. What I would suggest is we probably need to be waiting for a little bit of rest and pullback. Um, in some of these high flyers before we make some new trading decisions on them. So watch that closely. Might want to take a look at um, uh, companies like iHeart. iHeart was in a nice bullish move um, to the upside, but notice we're starting to fail here in the chart. We pushed down, pushed down through the eight exponential here. We rallied back up and now we're failing once again heading into that 50 day moving average and i gotta tell you we're seeing a lot of these high flyers really pulling back so be careful in some of these charts um, trying to chase them long or trying to anticipate the long because we may be reaching that point where we could start just drifting on lower to the downside. Um, watch those close. Um, also, you might want to take a look at the energy. XLE Energy put in a failure pattern yesterday at its 50 day moving average. Um, take a look at that breaking down, rallying back. Notice that 50 day moving average starting to flatten out and turn. Um, watch that closely. There is that possibility that we could see those energy stocks moving lower, um, which actually prompted me to close a position um, yesterday, taking a profit in um, that energy sector just because um, that condition does exist. Now, what do we do if the market does turn over? What could we do? Well, one of the things that I've been um, talking and educating folks in the Right Way Option Service uh, about is how we can hedge or um, um, avoid some of this risk. Take a look at um, RWM. RWM is an inverse ETF. Now this is a straight inverse ETF. There's, it's not a leveraged um, inverse ETF. And so this is one I've been suggesting that um, you might be able to pick up and hold just to hedge off um, a market rolling over. IWM is a short on the Russell 2000. And let's take a look here. Notice that we have popped above our 50 day moving average and that 50 day moving average on this ETF is starting to turn and roll to the upside. So with that going on with this little turn and roll to the upside, we have a pattern here that we call a rounded bottom breakout. This is that possible pattern that could set up and move us higher in this um, inverse ETF. So watch that closely. I do think I wouldn't want to chase it right here. I do think a little rest or pullback in this is due. Um, but watch that closely. If that can hold above its 50 day moving average and that average turns up, then I would suggest there is upside potential here in um, RWM. So keep a close eye on that. Other index ETFs that you could take a look at that aren't ready for prime time just yet, but are starting to show um, those signs of um, bottoming, uh, maybe getting close. Um, take a look at DOG, D-O-G, as an inverse ETF on um, the Dow. Now, this, uh, now some of these um, individual or straight ETF, inverse ETFs, don't have um, 
um, as much um, um, volume as you might see in something um, that is a double or triple inverse. Those seem to be much higher traded. The reason I'm bringing these up is just because they are um, a direct inverse and you don't have um, tremendous leverage risk. Um, in these trades for potentially holding. So take a look at DOG. Um, for now, PSQ, nowhere, no way, shape, or form is that ready to um, show some bullishness. And uh, same with SH. Those are still um, trending down pretty strongly. So time to wait on those, but something to put on your list and keep an eye on. So with that, guys, um, there's a few things for you to look at. I, I would suggest being a little bit careful and cautious today. Reel in some of those profits. Um, think, about, uh, think about protecting maybe just a little bit, just in case we start um, showing that um, little bit of weakness coming in. So everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Have a great day of trading, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning.